Rec AEA 2008 has gotten off to a great start, but there's a tremendous amount of discussion in the halls, and obviously with Newt Gingrich here and all part of the discussion's politics. Let's talk about the high points and low points of what the avionics industry has to contend with in 2008. Well, I think that um, we've got a lot of issues going on right now, and it's going to be a great year for us. You look at the new products we have, the new technologies, and, and the uh, products that are moving out there, and it's a great time to be in the industry. I think at the same time, we have to deal with the politics of Washington, and that's a challenge. Uh, if you've uh, been following uh, any of the discussions up on the Hill and the, and the congressional hearings that have been taking place, uh, there's a lot of concern there. Uh, we've got political solutions to technical issues, and, and the reality is, is that all of that will trickle down and affect all of the certificate holders, which are the repair stations installing the avionics, and the FAA resources available to uh, assist in the data uh, management and approval of these systems. It's going to be a real problem for the industry. I think that the average uh, pilot, owner, operator, and repair stations have to be in involved. They have to be communicating uh, to their elected officials that, in fact, they're in aviation and they're impacted by these, uh, these activities. Uh, that uh, when you talk about repair stations, it's not just about uh, the airlines. When you talk about uh, third-party maintenance, major issue, uh, Congress is, is uh, proposing legislation uh, to deal with third-party maintenance outside of the U.S without considering the thousand companies inside the U.S. that are doing air, uh, work on European uh, aircraft and products. A lot of the AEA members and a lot of the shops here uh, hold uh, multiple repair station certificates all over. We do work on uh, uh, international aircraft from, from literally every area of the, of the world, and uh, yet everybody's focused on where the airlines are outsourcing, not looking at where business aircraft are being insourced. And that's a big issue for us. Aero TV is brought to you by. Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500. The jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. The FAA is actually doing a lot of good things. They're working with industry. Uh, they've recommended uh, a number of uh, solutions to a lot of problems. They have a new initiative coming out later this year that's going to allow for outsourcing uh, de uh, designate, designees to perform field approvals. Actually have DARs who can sign block three of a form 337 is a field approval. That is a major step forward and uh, really looking forward to working with the FAA to, to make that happen. We also know that the the, uh, uh, the uh, 145 uh, rewrite, the NPRM. The, the rewrite of the rewrite of the rewrite? The rewrite of the rewrite <laughs> of the rewrite. Well, it's actually the end of the rewrite. The public commented. Yes. And in the process of the public comment, the FAA couldn't resolve certain issues, and so it had to go back into committee. Uh, this is what's coming out of those committees, and this is the final, final uh, rewrite of that, dealing with ratings, quality systems. Um, we don't know what it is. It should be out by midsummer, mm -hmm. which will give a great opportunity for uh, AEA regional meetings to discuss it and to work out uh, solutions to, to getting that information into the shops. Uh, so we can minimize the impact uh, when it does come out. Should be out about August time frame. Okay. As you can you can tell from the FAA, they're into the quality process. They're into uh, SMS. It's not like that hasn't made some news lately. Well, it, you know, but the things that we we have to think about with the news. Um, you know, I live here in the Washington area, and when uh, you know the the, uh, the commute backs up because uh, you know somebody is. Uh, speeding, driving too fast, uh, driving recklessly, and they cause an accident. We don't blame the state troopers for the accident, we blame the people that did it wrong. And I think that that's part of what we have to do here is, is that, you know, the FAA is the, is the state trooper, they're the police. We don't expect the police to stop every speeder, but we do expect them to slow it down and, and to, to, to put some honesty into it. We have to look at the FAA the same way. Their job isn't, isn't to be absolute perfect, their job is to keep honesty in the system. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the issues that, are, that have been on the, in the front page of the Wall Street Journal and, and the Washington Post, uh, it's been unfairly picking on the FAA for a lot of that stuff. Let's talk about two subjects that have uh, boiled up and simmered for a while. Let's talk about reauthorization and let's talk about ADSP. Well, I think reauthorization is moving forward. Uh, Senator Reid moved uh, the Senate forward today and I think we're going to be seeing some activity. It's very important to look at the two bills, the Senate version and the House version. The Senate version is actually the one that has the, the user fee in it, but it's a very clean bill. There's not a lot of writers on it. When you look at the House bill, it doesn't have user fees, but has an increase in fuel tax. Uh, but it also has other fees in there. Classic example is a registration fee. It's not very much. I think it's 20 or $25 for registration. But at the same time, the FAA is proposing to require uh, regular re-registration of your aircraft. So you know, there's some hidden issues. There's also certification issues. And we're going to see those as we do avionics installations. Uh, some fees for engineering services and fees for uh, uh, certifications and support. And so uh, it's not going to be a clean year. Um, and we have to follow it very closely and see how it's going to go. Where that model's followed overseas, those expenses that we've seen out there have added up to be pretty significant. Well, and in fact, uh, we've seen issues in Europe primarily where we see engineering user fees be a real detriment to upgrades. Um, you know, you have the agency trying to promote the safety enhancing benefits of new technology and at the same time creating a financial penalty for installing it. It's not a good market, uh, a, a good model to move forward with. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Okay, four little letters, ADSB. ADSB is interesting. The proposal from the FAA is part of their next gen. And uh, the next gen is, is, is a wide ranging, uh, complex process. But they proposed ADSB out. And AEA commented on it, and basically the ADSB out that the FAA proposed is the current ADSB on steroids. Mm -hmm. Reason being is, is that we have to have the reliability mm -hmm. of the data to replace a radar unit. Mm -hmm. That's pretty straightforward. Problem is, is that we don't want people to not put ADSB in the aircraft today right. and miss out on the safety benefits of ADSB in while we work out the, the, the difficulties on this issue. Which could take quite a while. It's going to take quite a while. Um, there's um, 80 plus different issues that were raised in the comment periods that have to be resolved. It's part of the rulemaking process. They can't move forward until they come up with answers. Uh, I think it's important that, that we don't miss out on the safety benefits. And the other thing that with this is, is that, that we're talking 12 years out. Technology today is advancing so quickly that Literally, the ADSB that we know today mm -hmm. will most likely be obsolete in 10 years, and you're looking at, at newer, faster, better, uh, clear displays, uh, faster processors. Uh, most of the avionics that we see today is advancing so quickly that you're going to want to upgrade in 10 to 15 years. And I think there's a lot of R&D out here on this floor and, and products on these floors that are going to really solve the, the uh, FAA's proposal situation and still give us the data, the weather, the traffic that we're looking for today. Rick, thanks so much. As uh, AEA's person on the Hill, you've been an invaluable resource to us in the past and certainly to the industry, and you ain't stopping now. We thank you. It's my pleasure.